Close your eyes and gather your mind around the breath. All your thoughts, all your intentions, make them relate to the breath, coming in going out right now. Give the mind a grounding, give it a good foundation. It's when the mind is well grounded that it can see things more clearly. After all, that was how the Buddha found the truth, was by grounding his mind, getting it solidly here in the present moment, and then observing the mind, observing cause and effect. And one of the things he learned was that true happiness has to come from your own actions. At the beginning of the new year, we want to find happiness. We want it to be a happy new year. He realized that the Buddha was right. That happiness has to come from your actions, particularly your skillful actions. He set out three. Generosity, virtue, meditation. Well, it's interesting with the meditation, he also defined it as restraint. In other words, keeping your mind under control, restraining it from doing anything that would be out of line with the qualities you have to develop for the mind to be really skillful. We start first, as he said, with heedfulness. That is the basis for all skillful qualities, realizing that our actions will make a difference. If we're careless, we can cause a lot of trouble. If we're careful, we can avoid a lot of that trouble. And if we have good will for ourselves, then we would want to avoid trouble. We care. In other words, you don't just say, I want to do what I want to do, and then who cares about the results? You care about the results. That's the result of good will, and that's why we restrain ourselves. So all those concepts go together. Development, which is the Pali word for meditation, good will. Restraint. That's a cluster that motivates everything else. Based on that, we realize the Buddha was right that acts of merit are another word for happiness. In other words, when you're generous, when you're virtuous, as you get the mind under control, this is where happiness lies. Because you realize happiness is in your power. You don't have to go around begging it from somebody else. or having to demean yourself. And John Fuhr once said, when we come here to practice, we're nobody's servant. We're here independently, because we realize that what the Buddha said was right, that it's our actions that will make a difference. And so we take responsibility. We assume that power. And then we reap the rewards, a happiness that's lasting, a happiness that doesn't harm anybody in any way. That's the kind of happiness you want for a happy new year. That was for things outside, whether they be good or bad. That's A lot of that is beyond our control. But we can control our actions. We can make up the mind that we're going to do only skillful things. Anything that's unskillful will stay away. That's a decision we can make, and that's a decision we can stick by. So when you think about a happy new year, look inside and come and look at what the Buddha's recommendations are for trying to find true happiness. And you find that he's right, that it is possible to find a happiness that doesn't harm anybody, and that your search for happiness can be a gift not only to yourself but also to others. When you search for happiness in a wise and responsible way.